In the previous tutorial, we looked at methods we can use with the type text. If we look at the top of the reference documentation page for the type text, we see a section for parent types. The last parent type listed is a type called graphic surface. The type graphic surface represents a rectangular image stored in memory. Recall that the type text represents a rectangular image generated for you that contains text. The types text and graphic surface have a close relationship because every object of type text is also of type graphic surface. Graphic surface is a more general type and text is more specific. That is, every text object is a graphic surface object, but not all graphic surface objects are text objects. We say that graphic surface is the parent type of type text, and text is a child type of graphic surface. We can illustrate this concept using more familiar categories. Consider the type Rolls-Royce. If you are lucky, you have an object of type Rolls-Royce in your garage. Rolls-Royce are also of type car, which is a more general type. This relationship between types is often illustrated using an arrow pointing from a child type to its parent type. Although all Rolls Royces are cars, not all cars are Rolls Royces. For example, there are Civics and Corvettes, which don't have umbrellas embedded in the door. We can go further and consider a still more general type, vehicle. All cars, including Rolls Royces, are vehicles, but there are other types of vehicles, such as planes and trains. This tree-like relationship between multiple types is often called a type hierarchy. The presentation type text is also involved in a type hierarchy. There are other types of graphic surfaces, such as bitmaps and ellipse graphics. In turn, every graphic surface is also of type picture part, which represents a 2D graphical element that can be displayed on the screen. Further, Every picture part is of type stimulus object, which just represents an object related somehow to displaying stimuli. In terms of objects of these types, you can think of text objects as containing graphic surface objects, plus additional data specific to text objects. For example, the image data itself once generated is stored in the graphic surface part, while properties specific to text, such as the caption or font, are only contained by text objects. In turn, the graphic surface object contains data common to picture parts and the data for stimulus objects. Because a text, text object is also a graphic surface, any of the methods of type graphic surface may be used with a text object. For example, we can set the words to draw using the set caption method of type text, and then we can make our text image partially transparent using the graphic surface set alpha method. In fact, you can use methods from any parent type. For example, the set description and description methods of the type stimulus object can be called using our text variable. This ability to use the functionality of parent types is called inheritance. We say that text inherits the methods of types graphic surface, picture part, and stimulus object because it is a descendant of all of these types. Another consequence of this type relationship is that anywhere in a program that a reference to an object of the parent type is required, you can use a reference to a child type object. For example, we can create a graphic surface variable and assign it the value in our text variable. Graphic surface variables contain references to graphic surface objects. This assignment works because a text object is also a graphic surface. After the assignment, S will contain a reference to the graphic surface part of the text object, so intro and S are essentially referring to the same object. Despite this, because S is a reference value of type graphic surface, we can only use methods of graphic surface and its parent types with S, and not methods specific to the text type. For example, if we try to use the text method set caption with the graphic surface variable S, the program will not run. 
Given just a reference to graphic surface, presentation knows only that the object referred to is a graphic surface, and not whether it's a text or a bitmap, or just a graphic surface. Therefore, it will only let you do things that are valid for graphic surface objects. The fact that in this case we know that the object is actually a text object is not sufficient. We can, however, call a graphic surface method like set alpha. Since intro and s refer to the same object, this will have the same effect as calling set alpha using the variable intro as we did before. In future tutorials, we will see examples of variables of a parent type which will contain references to different types of objects over the course of the program. Since not all graphic surfaces are texts, you cannot do the same thing in reverse. That is, you cannot assign a value of type graphic surface to a reference variable of type text. For example, this program is not valid and cannot be run. It will not run because we try to assign the value of the graphic surface reference variable s to the new text reference variable intro2. You might wonder whether it's possible to get back a reference to a child type from a parent type reference in the case where the reference object really is of that child type. You can do this using a conversion function with the same name as the child type. In this example, if the object referenced by s really is a text object, the conversion function will return a reference to that text object. If the object is not a text object, the function returns the null reference value. In this case, we happen to know it is. However, in general cases where you don't know what kind of object it is, you must test the value before using it to see if you have the null reference value. In this example, we end up with all three variables pointing at the same object so that the correct caption is printed. This type of conversion to a child type is almost never necessary. We only mention it here to better illustrate the relationship between types. We conclude with our first example of a program presenting a stimulus. This example will utilize most of what we've learned so far in the course. First, we set a couple of additional properties of our text object. Since a text object does not actually create the image until you're ready, we need to use the redraw method to tell it to create the image according to its properties. Next, we create an object of type picture and store a reference to it in a picture variable. A picture object represents a complete screen of graphics which may contain multiple elements and can be presented to the screen. You can think of the initial state of this object as a blank picture. We can see the methods for type picture in the reference documentation. We will use the add part method which adds a 2D graphical element to the picture at a specific location. Notice that the first argument to this method is a picture part value. Because text is a descendant type of picture part, we can use our text reference for this argument and it will be converted automatically to type picture part. The second and third arguments to the picture add part method are the x and y coordinates for the added object. We will place the text element in the middle of the picture by setting those coordinates to 0, 0. In order to see our picture, we need to tell the picture object to render the entire picture and have it displayed on the screen, which is done using the present method. In future tutorials, we will use better and more exact methods for timing stimuli, but to keep things simple right now, we use a built-in function wait interval, so we have time to see the picture. To change the text, we first reset the caption of our text object. Here we are using a second form of the setCaption method which takes a second argument. The second argument indicates if we want to have the text redrawn immediately, which eliminates the need to call the redraw method after that. Note that we don't need to change anything about our picture object. This is because the picture object contains a reference to the text object, so that the picture object and our variable intro both refer to the same object. If we change the object using intro, 
This change will be reflected when the picture is reconstructed. We can see this when we run the scenario because the picture changes. Also note that changing properties of the picture object or changing elements included in the picture has no immediate effect on what's displayed on the screen. To reconstruct the new picture and display it on the screen, we must again use the present picture method. So even though here we changed the caption before waiting the 1000 milliseconds, we didn't see the change until after we presented the picture again.